So uh, I hold a moment now. We'll see about the basics of Android application development, then maybe it's better if you listen and and some fundamental about the Android application development. And actually, you can use two kinds of programming language to build an Android application. You can either use Java or Kotlin. Okay. Kotlin is actually recently introduced by Google due to the, the optimization and improvement for the mobile devices. So this is the latest one, but since you don't have a background in Kotlin, we will consider to use Java for this class. And, and again, Java is the part which was discussed in the curriculum for this specific course. Of. But that one is the, the better one. Uh, you may read about it. So when we write the code, actually, uh, our application is going to be uh, compiled into .apk file. Or you can simply say uh, an Android package. That's an abbreviation. Android package, .apk, yes. We can install only .apk file on Android devices. Yes? The things that we download from G drive is .apk file. So the output of running and executing an Android program is .apk file. So similarly, it's .jar in the case of Java, and it's .exe in the case of uh, Visual Studio, yes? So you need to think like that. So actually, the, those uh, uh, parties or the so-called software uh, development kit in the Android consists of uh, everything that you need to to use for building an Android application, like there is a debugger is there, built in libraries are there, and again, additional documentation is also there. When you come up with the error, and if you move your cursor to there, you will get a detailed documentation about that specific error or that specific function you are going to use. And even Android do have a sample code, so you can begin the hello only directly without writing any source of code. Okay, so initially, just before five, six years, when we introduced Android programming class, we, we utilized Eclipse for building an Android application. And now Android Studio is the most commonly used one. And of course, in order to build any, any kind of application using Android Studio first, you need to have one IDE. That can be Android Studio or Eclipse. I think you already have that on your machine. And you need to install ADT. Okay? ADT is a kind of like a virtualization software for running and debugging your application. So you need to create a virtual mobile phone on your computer and you can install your APK file on that and you can simulate it without the need to have a cell phone. So if they had a lemon and mobile sign order, mobile app development with the help of ADD. So, but at least you need to have one ADD. So you need to install it because it is not part of the Android Studio. Maybe channel with the ADD with a channel and also that's a virtual device and you need to create and you need to build your app after uh, creating it. So let's take a look at about some application components. With Android, you can build four types of applications. I don't know why you are not listening. Okay. So the first one is called activities. Activity is something that has a graphical user interface. Okay. So if you want to build something that has a graphical user interface, like contact browser, game, or something like that, that means you are building an activity. And if you want to create a service, I think we do have some example here, like Gmail Compost. So if there is a GUI, you can see this is an activity. And there is also something that we call service. Service are tasks that run in the background. So they don't need to have a visual user interface or graphical user interface. So typically, like, you may want to play some music in the background. So you, may, you will say start, and in the background, 
the background service will play everything for you. So while playing the music, you can access your Facebook or do other things. So those things are called services. And the third one is called content provider. So we can utilize a content provider to allow the exchange of data between two different applications. For example, contact has its own database. If you want to build another application that need to have the access to your contact, so you need to use a content provider. Through content provider, you will add the contact, so it will provide you all this information. Okay, by default, contact is public, so you can have a direct access to that file. So you don't need to recreate the uh, personal account in order to access this file. So typically, you can do something that you do with a typical database. You can insert, update, delete, and do some sort of search operation like the so called CRUD. And finally, we have a broadcast receiver. This is actually to receive. The system wide announcement. For example, the battery. Battery will utilize this concept. There is no button that you need to click in order to get an announcement about the battery level. Yes. For example, I'm building a, a gaming application and I want to stop the game when the battery level reaches 5% or 10%. So to get to know the battery level, you need to listen to the broadcast announcement from the battery unit that will be sent from the Linux kernel. So the Linux kernel will always announce, make an advertisement to all up on your machine. Then the current running one will receive that information. Yes. For example, in a in typical Android, you will open the torch, the torch, if the battery level is one greater than one person, yes? If it is one or, yeah, if it is one or two, the battery, this one will not work. The torch will not work, yes? The flashlight, it will not work. Camera video will not work. So at that time, you need to embed this kind of code. So first, before opening it, you will listen to those broadcast announcement from the battery, and then you can deserve your application. So we have four categories, activity, service, Content provider, broadcast receiver. So these are the four class of application we can build using Android. So application development using Android Studio. So first thing we need to know is about the structure. By default, when you say five new project, Android Studio will create dozens of folders. So before writing any code, you need to know what are the purpose of those folders. Because most of the time we need to interact and go to that specific folder and they make some changes. So typically, there are some ready-made templates are there, ready-made templates, but we need to, we don't, we are not going, going to utilize those templates. We will start from nothing. So we prefer to use the empty one, because if we begin with this one, something that has already grabbed a calendar first, you don't learn anything. Everything is already made there, yes? Once you know about these ones, you can utilize those built-in libraries to make your life easier. So in our class, we select this one, and then we'll click next. And actually, at the beginning, I see that Android was not only made for smartphones. Okay, Android will run on TVs, smart TVs, yes? On the smart TV, there is an Android operating system, autonomous cars, yes? Internet of things. And again, we run operating system like smartwatch. Those are powered by Android, yes? It's cameras, camera for operating system, Android, no? Smart camera, using a cyber? Like uh, 3D Canon, 4D, you know what I mean? Android. So in our case, we will focus on this one, phone and the tablet, okay? Because we don't have these machines at this time. But we can do the same thing, okay? 
Then the next step, you need to give your application a name. So the first one is the names that will appear next to your app or after installation. You may say Kunkumo. So the app name that you see, for example, this one is galleries. So if you make it Kunkumo, Kunkumo will come here. So that's the first part you need to fill. The next part is called package name. This must be something unique. Actually, it will use reverse domain name. In a typical domain name, you will say what? www something dot one, com. If you reverse it, com will come first, yes? Now we are using this kind of things. Take a look at it, this. Com dot guard this up dot my application because I already labeled it one, my application. So if you upload it to this, the Play Store, that does need to be unique. So I always need to make this one unique. So if I create another application and I will say gadsa2, it will say com.gadsa.2, it will go goes like, like that. That's the standard. This is not actually mandatory, but if you put into, if you want to upload into the Play Store, you need to give this kind of thing. So that Google will identify you. So let's see. Let application Casaro, let's feel the fit yard of us as I am. Let's see. God select it to Tarago, the God set us around the left. You might unwire it. Like, let me show you some apps. Let me show you that. Busy, busy. Somebody's taking for so. So as you got, let me say it, Play Store Live. Uh, let me open it. Play Store. Let's see here. I hope it will open. Uh, search along. Yeah. Search like a phone, maybe. Uh, Benny, I'm going to go to the end again. Or I can simply say, com. Dot. Let me you Redline versus Senate legislation in Miranda Ziga. Yeah, about the Oro quiz in Miranda. Bezali will tell you, Zila, I've not yet tell you to me out at the number. We need to have that. Then, as it's got a good book, Bezako, Mulu, Mulu, Bene, I've not yet tell you to be a manager. So, to Yan and do. So, anyways, so that's the sole purpose we need to provide the package name. Okay, so that's the package name. This is your application name, the package name. Of course, where you are saving, that's the saving location. What kind of language you are going to use? We have two options: yes? Java and Kotlin. Then, this is very important: minimum SDK, minimum software development kit. So here you need to be strategist, okay? If you lower the API level, your app is going to run on all Android devices because all Android devices are what? Apps are backward compatible. Okay, let me say, Ziga API 21 Marat. Then API 21 Salamarat, what if it yellow could look nice? If you select API 13, your app will not run on those device running SDK, which is less than 30. Did you get the point? Is it like a percent in a grammar? Now, look, I'm saying earlier, there are more than 2.5 billion devices running mm, Android, yes? So if I select API 21, this app is going to run what? On what? 94 percent of android devices because those remaining are what they are running what api level less than 21 so you need to be selected most of the time the latest api version contains more advanced libraries for image recognition and advanced tasks okay but those library will not work on those older forms if you select that, okay? 
that's uh, so even and this is carrying out to one up finish in the button in that structure in the top of the game or in the in the structure is around that but you need to know this folder structure this is very important but as you know creating marriage major marriage it will automatically create all this file you didn't then anything but all these files and the folder structures are created for you so the first part previously as I have already mentioned that if your app requires some resource usage from your devices, you need to declare or you need to request for permission. You need to request for permission to get some access. For example, if your app requires for phone camera, you need to request that permission, permission to get the camera. That needs to be declared here. You need to open this file, the so-called Android manifest.xml, and you need to write the code there. So anything that is related to resource usage must be declared here inside Android manifest file. Okay. And then you have a Java folder, the one which says Java. Inside that, there is a Java name or file name which is which says main activity or depending on application you are going to use. Okay, so in, inside here you will establish a link between the graphical user interface and some task you are going to perform. So you will write a typical Java code here. Actually, we will write two types of code. To create the graphical user interface, you will write an XML file graphical beautification for the interaction you will write a java code so to create an interface you will come in look under resource folder there is a folder called a folder called layout inside this layout you need to create a graphical user interface you need to open activity main and then write your exam in the code once you finish that for example when a user click on some button you will do some tasks like to change the background color or do some other things. So those interaction is going to be written inside the Java code. So this is all about the color and the graphical user interface. Interaction must be written here. And if you have some image graphics, you need to put that inside a drawable folder. Drawable folder. If you want to create some menus, for your graphical user interface, you need to place it here. If you have some constants like values, streams, you need to declare them here. So in just you don't need to work with a gradient script. This is auto-generated code. So most of the time we don't need to touch this part. So if you edit something and you will come up with thousands of errors because gradients are the things that will be generated by by uh, the Android, Android Studio set. Typically for removing unnecessary cores during the compilation. For example, uh, you declare some function, but you didn't use it. And in, in building a mobile application, we are talking about resource constraint devices. We don't want something that is useless to be installed on our machine. So automatically when converting your source code to APK file, Gradin will find those idle function and it will automatically ignore them in making .apk file. That's the core purpose of Gradin. Okay, Gilson, what is it? So let's see. Declare a minna regna ger kallau mobile action. Avoid a minna minna application. Hard to access mare game file likka hone. Sim card game yaane bikka hone. Silk game mida wool ka hone. Ziga no minna sakho. Ekir gize no de zimin mata. Rarely we will come to this code. We only write some lines of code to get a permission about storage device, camera, blah, blah. Most of the time, we will waste our time here in designing a graphical user interface and writing an interaction pattern. Click event. Click sit direct in edit it. Because it has to edit it in the log, the garden is So yeah, now I, I think it's it's very clear now. And so now we have this kind of folder structure.
and Gradle file. So typically, let's, let's begin with the first one about the Android manifest file. So you will come up with this kind of code. Okay. So at the beginning, it says manifest. This is XML namespace. You need to declare this one as a namespace. And then this part, the application part, talks about the application. Yes. So here you will provide the path to your icon file. What is your, the icon for your application? Okay. You need to provide that, the application name, at resource code. With art symbol, you can directly access the folder name. Okay. Something that was here. Then you need to provide the activity name and you can do numerous things here. Okay. So if you want to declare some application to utilize a camera, you need to write it somewhere here. Yeah, come on, you know, you yeah, need declaration. Because that Java code, typical Java code, no, you need to mess with language and language. No, so so you got yo class and let's you can let me doubt public class main activity extend this upcom cap activity lab. Then importantly, we do have one function that's called on create. This is very important. So on create means something that is going to happen when you click that specific icon. So the logic will be written here. So for example, here I do have a gallery. So when I click here, that is something you are going to write here. So I need to do what? For example, when we click a gallery, it will show all the picture I have in a gallery, yes? So those logic needs to be written here. So the first task that's going to be executed when a user touches an app icon is going to be written inside on create function. So here, look at this line of code. It says what? Set content view to resource, R means resource. So that means we are calling this folder, RES folder. Resource dot layout, this is again another folder name. Because here we have seen what? R is this one. Layout is this one. Inside that, we are calling this function to show some sort of graphical user interface. So when a user play, click on that button, please show this file, activity main.xml. Here you don't need to write the file extension. File extension is becomes a file like Okay, just simply resource file with this, you know, file name back, you know. And one important thing you need to remember, resource file name must be always written in lowercase letter. If you make a typo, most of the time you may not get an error, but your program will not work. So you need to be specific. Resource file must be written in lowercase letter. With small letter, no That's the standard. No something made by us. So activity main in the loan. So let's see, can resource access in the narrow. If you want to access some things inside the menu folder, you need to say what? R dot menu dot that something. If you want to access this one, now that, that Java code is accessing this one. How I how I read that? I say R to me resource dot layout dot specific file names. So that's a way to access that. So this is a simple code. So you can click generic, you can resource file after the normal. And then what what will what what was inside this file? Activity main. So it's an XML file. XML is as you know, it's extensible markup language. Yes, it's a kind of HTML, but it's somewhat extended. We can declare our own HTML tag. That's what makes it different from that of HTML. You can declare a new tag by saying tag kunkumo, but you need to close that with kunkumo. Yes. So this is a typical structure of an XML. So uh, you need to provide XML namespace here, something like this. XML namespace, Android, HTTP, something like this one. And then take the view. Anything that you open must be closed. Because it's a tag, yes? So here we open it. What is the weight of that text view? Hey, it weeds. Yandan do graphical user interface line in Nasca Meto. Hey, it will weeds do specify Naraga. Let's again let me tell. Says what? Layout weeds equal to wrap content. Wrap content means it will extend the size to the 
to, to the extent of the, the, the size of the text that you are going to write. So if you are writing Gardisa, so it will automatically adjust the it is size to, to fit Gardisa. If you say Muhammad Ali, it will extend its size to accommodate Muhammad Ali. If you increase it more, it will increase like that. So that was what we, we mean, rap content. Rap content. If you say another alternative to rap content is feel parent. Feel parent means use all the available space. So Murun is a gamma in screen. If you say we is equal to feel parent, so that button will occupy the entire rows of your screen, whether you are using this one or the tablet one. So we do have two options when in, in specifying we is in the eight. It can be wrap content, auto adjust in the where the more static or more screen in this margin channel. And then something you want to write on top of that. Text view. So this is the text that's going to be displayed. Yeah, numerous options are there. Then anything that you open must be closed. For example, text view line There must be a closing tag. For closing, you can utilize two options. The first one is this one, or you can remove this one and later on you can write text view slash. So Kind of exercise. Create an app that links to. Yeah, this is more kind of advanced at this time. And yeah, this I, I screenshot while teaching student at Ambu University. I think yeah, it's my. Hmm? It's my daughter university. Oh, that's good. So Ambu University. So maybe. Yeah, for a button. Let's take a look at this. So we are defining a button. Okay. So on this button, we are specifying it is widths. So the width is this one. Wrap content. And hey, it's again wrap content. On click, button open. So button open. That means look, look here. When a user click on this button, it will call this function, which was written inside the Java code. Then it will automatically come here and open this website automatically. So I will I will discuss about that later on. Okay. So we need to specify that. So maybe about tomorrow class in Alina. We will come back to that later on. Maybe uh Kazaba bit. Yeah. And then lecture is again now, but I know practically and